Judge Adam to be followed by Jenny Mara. Thank you, President Officer. It seems I've taken part in most of the budget debates since my election in 2011, and every one of them has been in the backdrop of the Westminster Tory uh, austerity programme. The Scottish Government continues to deliver for our nation, and this time we find once again that the Scottish Government is mitigating against excessive impacts of Westminster spending cuts. This budget protects our most vulnerable in our society, protects them from the ongoing Westminster austerity programme. But I would like to uh, discuss and address the Scottish Government's uh, record in education. And as we look at it, as we heard yesterday, with the passing of the Education Scotland Bill, closing the educational attainment gap has been a priority of this Scottish Government. Because for far too long, it seemed that the progress of education depended on where you were born, where you lived. And now we have the £100 million Attainment Scotland Fund that quite rightly targets primary schools, which serve our most deprived communities. £33 million of this investment is provided this year. This work on educational attainment is happening this year. And let us not forget that in these times of Westminster austerity, we continue, we have see continued investment in 600 hours of free high quality early learning, childcare offered to all three and four year olds. This moving to 1140 hours by the end of the next parliament if the SNP government is re-elected. But we still have £1 billion of investment in Scotland's very successful university sector while ensuring that Scottish students continue to benefit from free tuition and the continued commitment on teacher numbers. This is in the form of the £88 million funding package. But that brings me to our local authorities. And as someone who used to work uh, as a local councillor, it is my opinion that local government has received a challenging but fair financial settlement. And with my previous experience as a councillor, I would say it has always been thus, presiding officer. But it is important that our local authorities Mr. look Bebe, at look more like innovative ways of delivering services, finding issues, finding ways to be able to deliver these. The Budget, integration please. of health and social care is an example of joint working and ensuring that there is no doubling up of delivery of service. But it is, at its very heart, an opportunity for our communities to get the service that suits their needs. And this is the challenge for local government, presiding officer. Ms. Local Lamin, government I must lead the way. Innovation and delivery of that best practice. I mentioned yesterday during our debate that we had in education that COSLA and other councillors came to the Education Committee and were asked by me what was their innovative plans for education, what was the way they were going to work together to make that difference. But for them, it appeared it was business as usual, head in the sand attitude. And that, presiding officer, in these challenging times is not good enough. We need to make sure that we work together to find new solutions, new ideas, while at the same time delivering service. We need to have a mature debate while we're having this, because this is what the public wants. I'll take Mr Finlay now, if he wants. Neil Finlay. Oh. All right. George Adam. He wanted in. He wanted in, so fair enough. Mr Bibby, oh, any more for any more? Neil Mr. Bibby. Um, was it a fair, uh, fair funding settlement for local authorities when you were a councillor, Mr Adam, between 2007-2012, when you voted to cut 200 teachers from schools in Renfrewshire? Intervention through the chair, please. George Adam. The whole point we have to say here is to Mr Bibby is it's time to move on and deal with the issue now. Our public, our Order, public please. and our constituents. Order. And Mr Bibby, when him and I meet in the hustings in Paisley, he Mr. Adam, can you stop for a moment? And I will can I have order, mine. please? George Adam. Thank you. Well, Mr. Bibby, will I get a chance during the debate in the election? I'll defend our case, and he can defend his. And his is not a good one, because I know which one the public actually trusts. So when you look at what we've actually had, the situation where the Scottish Government is continually trying Ms. Lamont, to I don't think the members taking with an their partner organisations to try and ensure that we get what the public actually want. But the Government is also, with the Westminster austerity programme, it also seeks to make 
uh, the, the Westminster Austerity Programme seeks to make the old, the weak and the disabled, the ones who suffer the most, it seeks to make them suffer for others' excesses. But this budget seeks to help those I have already mentioned. £35 million pounds to fully mitigate against the bedroom tax, maintaining funding for prescription and eye checks, and free concessionary travel for old and disabled and young people. All of the above, the opposition callously call the free stuff. But these are things that are helping every man, woman and child in Scotland and are valued by members of our community. So, in closing, President Officer, I would say that once again, the Scottish Government is standing up for all Scots during very difficult, challenging times. From a distant, uncaring Westminster Government that has no love for our communities, I know who my constituents believe and trust with our national finances and future. And I look forward in the coming weeks to the campaign ahead to see how the opposition parties explain their part in all this. Thank you. And